Greetings. It's been a long time since I've uh, posted anything on this channel. I haven't had uh, teas that warranted just a video exploration. Um, the ones that I have featured prior have required me to uh, exposit on them further because they had quite the stories to tell and me just rambling on is not as interesting as me in writing. This is a different uh, thing entirely because these are two tees from uh, one outfit that uh, helped small gardens in Assam achieve uh, regular excellence in processing. And this outfit they set up, uh, set up, not set up, <laughs> set up research stations and process. Uh, experimental processing stations in two, uh, maybe three, maybe four, I don't know. They're working with a lot of small gardens in Assam, particularly in the uh, upper Dibrugar district. Um, and what they're doing is uh, basically coming up with uh, methods of processing that actually match the garden profiles, at least from what I've observed. What I have here are two green teas from two different producers in the upper Assam, upper Dibrugar district of Assam. And even though the, uh, the green teas have similar processes and the same name, they're done in completely different ways. The first green tea that I've got is from a producer called Latumoni. You will likely recognize that name because I featured them uh, twice on my blog. Uh, link down below to those write-ups. And a garden that I haven't actually featured yet will, at some point, <laughs> uh, called uh, Kolyapani. And as you notice, these green teas are completely different. Kolyapani... I tried to find out more information besides the stuff that's on the uh, Tea Leaf Theory website. And as I forgot to say at the at the top of the video, uh, Tea Leaf Theory is the outfit that provides the processing stations for these small gardens, and the uh, the research know how as well, and the marketing. They do the marketing for the teas and and uh, wholesale them out to various retailers. Uh, Koyapani, I couldn't find any other information on aside from what was on uh, different vendor websites and the Tea Leaf Theory website. Any information on the village that uh, the garden is named after, uh, the the region uh, in which the village is in, the Galecki Valley, couldn't find a darn thing. It's m more nebulous than trying to find uh, a specific spring field <laughs> in the U.S. Because uh, there are many different villages named Koliapani and Kaliapani. Latimoni was easy. No other village is named Latimoni. Kaliapani or Koliapani? Nothing. Uh, perhaps uh, it's because I don't have uh, internet in Assamese. <laughs> uh, but in the case here, uh, both of these green teas are uh, called Chihuahua green tea. Chihuahua is Assamese for beautiful. And before I open these up today, I thought they would be processed in a, in a fashion that is similar. And perhaps they are. But the results are completely different. Now, I theorize that uh, they had to uh, create a signature process for the green teas at the various gardens based upon their altitude, their terroir, the type of plants available. Uh, for instance, the green tea for the Koliapani uh, offering is completely from seed plants, whereas the uh, Latumoni one is from T17 cultivars as well as a mixture of different seed-grown plants. Cultivar being clonals. If you're watching me, you probably already know all that crud. But anyway, I've never dipped into these before. I dipped into last year's Coleopani, which was great, but uh, I didn't. I haven't dipped into this year's at all. And the one that I dipped in last year was a summer offering, I believe, not an autumnal. That's another thing I forgot to mention. These are autumnal green teas. Usually green teas are at their best when they're picked from spring plants, when everything is in full bloom and leaves are just coming out and have the fullest flavor. Well, these are from later, and uh, they don't smell like they're from later. Uh, the Latumoni 
Chihuahua Green. Uh, smells like a, a purple bamboo shoot from China. Uh, date sugar sweetness along with some uh, added minty bamboo-y <laughs> uh, profile. And then an underpinning of, uh, of Shung Poor earthiness in the back, which uh, I found unusual. It smelled like a, uh, a Shung Poo that I had from, or not Shung Poo, uh, Shung Cha that I had from Vietnam mere months ago. The Koliopani green smelled note for note like a, uh, a Luan Guapian. And uh, basically just straight sweetness and chestnuts and wonderfulness. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to get into these and I'll get into these now. But first let me show you the liqueurs because these are lovely. Pardon my complete lack of editing know-how here. I'm going to try to change the view. Oh, I guess I, I won't be doing that. So uh, there we go. Uh, obviously, they are green. <laughs> All right. Yeah, digging in. First, the. Let me adjust back there. One of these days I'll learn how to edit. First, the Latimoni green. Oh, yeah. And for you uh, hardcores, yes, I do have a cup of water for rinsing my palate between both of them. Tastes exactly like it smells. Uh, not too vegetal. A little bit grassy on the uh, on on the intro, uh, and then it has that sort of uh, sweetness along with some bamboo like mintiness, bamboo leaf like mintiness, and then an underpinning of earth. Not too grassy, not vegetal at all, and also not bitter. Uh, one of the problems that uh, I've run into with not just Assam green teas uh, in specific, but Assamica green teas in general, especially if they come from humid regions, is that sometimes they're over fried and you have to lower the temperature on which you're brewing to about sencha level just so you don't get a straight taste of bitter ash. <laughs> uh, not the case here, and I wasn't even really worried about that when I brewed these up because uh, they were whole leaf and looked like also they weren't young leaf in the case of the Coleopani, but uh, what was odd with the uh, Latumoni is I wasn't expecting as many buds as I was. Uh, I was expecting the same as the, uh, the Coleopani, which was just maybe young to uh, mid-range leaf, uh, whole leaf material that uh, could put up with anything. But I brewed it at about 180, uh, Fahrenheit just to be safe for about three minutes but uh, the result is is yeah no bitterness no uh, no vegetal profile coming through moving on to the Coleopani <laughs> that tastes note for note like a Chinese green specifically like I said a, uh, a, a Luan Guapian or maybe a uh, a, a preaching Ming Mao Feng, not a not a Long Jing. No, Long Jing is more whiny. Uh, this isn't whiny, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, this is more more what I would expect in a Chinese green, which is just straight sweetness with a nuttiness on the back end. And now just to fool around with the palate even more, both back to back. Mm. Mm. Both are sweet. This is sweeter. This is toastier. Um, one thing that I really like in, uh, in pan fried greens is just that toastiness that comes through. Uh, it also it it also helps to emphasize the sweetness I find, uh, especially if you're especially in Asamica, bringing out the best in Asamica is just a, a slower walk fire, as part of the uh, the whole kill green thing. Uh, the Latimoni's got the toastiness in spades. 
which is strange because it was also a profile I ran in, in, into uh, with their white tea, which is <laughs> just, just note for note a perfect white tea. Uh, yeah, these are different, but different in the same way, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> I think the difference in profiles here have less to do with the process but and more about the leaf material used. Because the leaf material is very different. More bud heavy in the case of the Latumoni, more leaf heavy, and a little bit of a darker fry for the Coleopani. Either way, both are great. <clears throat> 